Did you know that there are two exterior gates to Barovia? That's right! One in the west, where most games start, and one in the east, just outside of Kresk. Now we're all familiar with the eastern gate, like I said, that's where pretty much all games start. But if you've run the module before and you want to shake things up, you can start on the other side. That sounds stupidly simple, like there's almost nothing to it. And if that were the case, I, I wouldn't be making this video. When folks start their games in Kresk, they quickly realize just how much of the adventure hinges on your party starting at the eastern border. There's a lot of assumptions that get turned on their heads when you start over on the other side. So, today we're going to cover how you can start Curse of Strahd in Kresk and actually have a good time. Things that you should expect, things that you should account for, and things that you need to change. Welcome back to Lunch Break Heroes, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about starting in Kresk, if you hadn't figured that one out already. First, we're going to cover the major issues that you're going to face when starting in Kresk. For starters, there's no Death House. That little mini-adventure simply doesn't exist in Kresk, so we're going to figure out how to get your party to level 3 when they start the adventure. Next, unlike the village of Barovia, your characters can't just walk into Kresk. If they want inside those town walls, they're gonna have to do some work. Now, that's not a big deal until you realize that all of the encounters in the western part of the map are geared towards level 5 characters. That's bad news for low-level characters, so we'll have to make some adjustments. On top of that, there's a lack of introductory information in the West. Ismark in the Village of Barovia is the one who generally gives characters the lowdown, the 411, on what's going on. So we'll need to have somebody else be the information dump. And speaking of information, in order to know what to do and where to go, your players are going to need a Taraka reading. Unfortunately, Madam Ava's almost all the way across the map. So that means that we're going to have to find some other way of directing the characters. Lastly, a lot of the campaign revolves around escorting and protecting Irina. She's nowhere near Kresk, so we've got to figure out a way to get her and the party together somehow. Preferably without having the party hoof it all the way to her hometown. So those are our big problems. Let's go over solutions to each one of them. The absence of Death House is an easy fix. Just pluck it up from the village of Barovia and move it outside the western gates. This way, it's the first building that your parties encounter after they're drawn into the mist. I kind of talk about this in our other Death House video, which you can find right up there. Just like it's written in the module, the Burgomaster of Kresk, Dimitri, isn't going to let some random group of adventurers into his town. When your party first arrives, he's going to set them on a task in order to earn entry. Go get us our wine, he says, and check on our vassals to the south. And at that point, he tosses down a crudely drawn map of Barovia and lets the party go about their business. This not only introduces the untrusting nature of Barovians and gives your party something to do, but it also gives them the lay of the land with that handy map. Once the party is down at the winery, you're going to have to make a few changes. First, have your party battle it out with some twig blights before they meet the Mardikovs. This introduces the threat in the area and gives a valid excuse as to why the Mardikovs haven't just gone off to Kresg on their own. Remember, the party has no idea what the Mardikovs really are at this point. Next, you need to rebalance the encounters here for a third level party. There's 30 or so Needle Blights outside of the winery. Only have two groups of three or five engage the party at any given time. The rest just hang back as window dressing. Next, replace the 24 Twig Blights in area W9 with two Vine Blights. And have that Druid in area W16 and a Berserker show up on maybe, oh, the fourth round of combat. Lastly, decrease the damage of that brown mold in area W15 from 4d10 to 2d10. Dying in brown mold is a really crappy way to start an adventure. Don't bother with any of that winter splinter stuff here or the kidnapping subplot that I introduced in my winery video up here. We don't want the party going down to Yester Hill and getting themselves killed just yet. You can always introduce that stuff later on after the characters have leveled up just a little bit. 
Before we get on with that next section, you know what time it is. I gotta remind you that you can get this guide and all of the other written guides over on Patreon for just as little as a dollar. All these beautifully typeset PDFs, yours to download and keep forever. So go check that out. Also, lunchbreakheroes.com is up and running right now. We've got articles on Curse of Strahd and Dungeons and Dragons in general. Additionally, we've added a whole bunch of new things to the store for you to take a look at. So head on over to lunchbreakheroes.com and check it out. Let me know what you think. Drop me a line there. I'd love to hear from each and every one of you. With all of that said, let's get on with the next section of this video. Once the threat at the winery has been defeated, and some of wine has been delivered to Kresk, the party will be allowed entrance. Dimitri and his wife, and their still living, but very ill son Ilya, will put them up for the night. In the morning, they'll be asked to do some chores, like defeathering a chicken, chopping firewood, and whatnot. You can even run the Something New special event here at this time. This is a great place for it. I, that's a really cool, light-hearted event, and it's just, yeah, I don't know, it's cool. Once all that's done, Dimitri takes the party to the Shrine of the White Sun and gives them a lot of the same information that Ismark usually would. He explains that the land is ruled over by the immortal Strahd von Zorovich, and he's aided by dark-hearted Barovians and Vistani. He gives them background information on St. Markovia and her failed crusade against Strahd, and maybe also some limited information on the abbot. He also tells them that they aren't the first adventurers to be drawn in through the mist. In fact, another one came in just a few days ago. A woman with a prosthetic leg who was last seen entering the abbey on top of the hill. Now that the party has some baseline information about Barovia and its current situation, it's time to clue them in on their destiny. To do this, we're going to substitute Madame Eva for Esmeralda, who is also capable of giving a Taraka reading. But first, we need to get your party to meet her. You can do that by drawing your party into the Abbey by kicking off the Something Old special event. Here, a messenger runs up to Dimitri and announces that Ilya has succumbed to his illness and died. This prompts Dimitri to bring his son to the Abbey for help, insisting that your party come along. With your party now inside the Abbey of St. Markovia, they get to meet the enigmatic abbot who will, of course, raise Ilya from the dead, if only to further his own agenda. Unlike in my Abbey video, seen up here, the abbot here still wants a wedding dress for Vasilka. After your party has a run-in with Esmerella somewhere on the grounds, she introduces herself and insists on conducting a Taraka card reading to discern the fates of your adventuring party. Just be sure not to put any of the fortunes of Ravenloft items in either Kresk or the winery. Those are pretty crappy locations. Where's the sun sword? Oh, look, it's right here. Once all that's done, the abbot invites everyone to a rather awkward dinner where he can give a bit more background information on Strahd and Barovia, introduce the party to Vasilka, and pressure Dimitri to have your party go fetch a wedding gown from Velaki. This is a nice little parallel to the dinner with Strahd later on. Before your party leaves Kresk, Dimitri has one last parting gift. His own scouts found a body on the road, bearing a letter which he believes will interest your party. It's the same letter that's normally found on the body of Dalvin Elowensky in Area C. After reading it, Esmeralda compels them to search for her mentor, Rudolf Van Richten, before the devil sinks his fangs into Irina one last time. By now, your party should have the lay of the land. They should know about the fortunes of Ravenloft and the importance of protecting Irina. But how do they meet Irina at this point? Rather than having the party hoof it all the way to the village of Barovia, let them encounter Irina either in Velaki or on the road or maybe at Old Bone Grinder. She was in the company of some other adventuring party that met a grisly end and she's been left in dire straits. You get to whisk her away to safety. Kind of. And with a dead adventuring party on the road, you get not only a warning of the dangers of Barovia, but it's also a good chance for the party to score some basic loot. From there, everything plays out pretty much as written. So there's your Kresk start to the game. Get on it and let me know how it goes down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you back here next time.